for standing by. Welcome to the open meeting of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board. During the meeting, you'll be in listen-only mode. As a reminder, this meeting is being recorded and a recording is expected to be made available on the PCAOB website. I would now like to turn to Chair Williams to formally convene the meeting. Thank you, Phoebe. Good morning and welcome everyone. This is an open meeting of the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board on June 21st, 2022. We welcome those of you who are joined us today by webcast or dialing into the teleconference. Before you proceed with the agenda, I will note for the record that all board members are participating in this meeting and we are able to hear one another. The only order of business before the board today is a staff recommendation that the board adopt amendments to its auditing standards relating to the supervision of audits involving accounting firms and individual accountants outside the accounting firm that issues the audit report. To present the staff's recommendation, I will turn to our Office of Chief Auditor, Barb Vanich. Good morning, Chair Williams and board members, Ms. Barte, Ho, Stein, and Thompson. The Office of the Chief Auditor is pleased to recommend that the Board adopt amendments to its auditing standards related to the audits that involve accounting firms and individual accountants that are outside the firm issuing the auditor's report, which we refer to as other auditors. In addition, we recommend that the Board adopt a new auditing standard that will apply when the firm issuing the auditor's report divides responsibility for the audit with another accounting firm. The board first proposed amendments in this area in 2016 and has since refined the amendments in response to public comment. With the ultimate goal of protecting investors, the amendments are designed to strengthen the auditing standards that apply to an auditor's use of other auditors. Many companies have significant operations outside the country in which the auditor of the, their financial statement or lead auditor is located. The roles of other auditors have become more significant as companies' global operations have grown. To audit the global operations of their clients, lead auditors often assemble a team involving several other auditors. The work of these other auditors may account for a significant share of the audit. Working with other auditors can differ from working with people in the same firm. The lead auditor may encounter differences in business practices, market conditions, and cultural norms between auditors in different parts of the world. In addition, audit firms involved in the audit may have different systems of quality control. All of these factors can pose challenges in the coordination and communication between the lead auditor and other auditors. Without adequate supervision by the lead auditor to address these challenges, deficiencies in the other auditor's work can and do result in deficient audits. The amendments included in the adopting release are designed to increase the lead auditor's involvement in and evaluation of the work of other auditors. The heightened attention to other auditors' work should improve communication among auditors, enhance the ability of the lead auditor to prevent or detect deficiencies in the work of other auditors, and thus facilitate improvements in the quality of audits involving other auditors and promote investor protection. I would like to acknowledge the many people within the PCOB who provided significant contributions to this project. I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Dima Andrienko, Stephanie Hunter, Andrew Cleave, and Hunter Jones from the Office of the Chief Auditor, the team that led this project. I would also like to thank our colleagues from other divisions for their significant contributions, in particular, Nayantara Hensel, Mike Gerbit, Tian Lang, John Powers, Victor Yaraskevich, Jesse Zhao, Harsha Samarawira, and Kelly Poy in the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis. Drew Dropkin, Vince Meehan, and Matt Golden in the Office of General Counsel, and Dana Smith and Megan Healy in the Division of Registration and Inspections. I would also like to thank the staff in the Office of the Chief Accountant of the Securities and Exchange Commission for their support and timely assistance with this project. Now I'll turn the floor over to Stephanie and Andrew who will briefly discuss the amendments. Thank you, Barb. Uh, the rulemaking before the board today consists of amendments to existing 
PCAOB standards intended to increase and improve the lead auditor's involvement in and evaluation of the other auditor's work. The amendments take into account recent practice developments in the lead auditor's oversight of other auditors' work, including the greater use of technology. In addition, this rulemaking rescinds an interim standard, AS1205, but carries forward and strengthens some of its requirements in a new standard that applies to those infrequent situations where the lead auditor divides responsibility for an audit with another accounting firm. In these situations, a lead auditor refers in the audit report to the work of a referred to auditor. We are recommending that the board adopt the amendments and new standard after three rounds of public comment. The rulemaking carries forward many of the key aspects described in the 2016 proposal and in two supplemental requests for comment, including the rulemaking's economic analysis. We worked closely with our colleagues in the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, including in the analysis of quantitative information contained in filings with the PCAOB on Form AP related to a firm's use of the work of other audit firms. I will briefly describe important aspects of the amendments in the areas of audit planning in AS 2101 and audit supervision in AS 1201. I will then turn it over to my colleague, Andrew Cleave, to describe aspects of the new standard on divided responsibility, AS 1206, and other important amendments. In the area of audit planning, first, the amendments require that the engagement partner determine whether his or her firm's participation in the audit is sufficient for the firm to carry out the responsibilities of a lead auditor and report as such. The amendments in this area also provide considerations for the engagement partner to use in making this determination and require that the audit's engagement quality reviewer review the determination. Second, the amendments require that the lead auditor, when determining the engagement's compliance with independence and ethics requirements, understand the other auditor's knowledge of those requirements and experience in applying them. The amendments also require that the lead auditor obtain and review written affirmations regarding the other auditor's policies and procedures related to those requirements and regarding compliance with the requirements and a description of certain auditor client relationships related to independence. In addition, the amendments require the sharing of information about changes in circumstances and the updating of affirmations and descriptions in light of those changes. Third, the amendments require that the lead auditor understand the knowledge, skill, and ability of other auditors' engagement team members who assist the lead auditor with planning and supervision and obtain a written affirmation from other auditors that their engagement team members possess the knowledge, skill, and ability to perform assigned tasks. The amendments to AS 12, excuse me, the amendments to AS 2101 audit planning also include definitions of key terms, engagement team, lead auditor, other auditor, and refer to auditor. Turning now to the area of audit supervision. First, the amendments require that the lead auditor supervise other auditors under the board's standard on audit supervision, AS 1201, and inform other auditors about the scope of their work, identified risks of material misstatement, and certain other key matters. The amendments also require that the lead auditor and other auditors communicate about the audit procedures to be performed and any changes needed to the procedures. In addition, the amendments require the lead auditor to obtain and review written affirmations from other auditors about their performance of work 
in accordance with the lead auditor's instructions and to direct other auditors to provide certain documentation about their work. Continuing in the area of audit supervision, the amendments provide that in multi-tiered audits, a first other auditor may assist the lead auditor in performing certain required procedures with respect to second other auditors. Andrew will now cover some other important aspects of the rulemaking. Thank you, Stephanie. A new standard, AS1206, applies to those infrequent situations where the lead auditor divides responsibility for an audit with another accounting firm. The new standard, AS1206, requires the lead auditor to determine that audit procedures were performed regarding the consolidation or com combination of financial statements of the business units audited by the referred to auditor into the company's financial statement. It also requires that the lead auditor obtain the referred to auditor's written representation that it is independent and duly licensed to practice, and that the lead auditor disclose in the audit report the magnitude of the portion of the financial statements and, if applicable, internal controls audited by the referred to auditor. Additional amendments we are recommending to be adopted include amendments to revise AS 1015, due professional care in the performance of work, to emphasize that other auditors are responsible for performing their work with due professional care. Amendments to revise AS 1215 audit documentation to expressly state that in an audit involving other auditors, an other auditor must retain documentation of the work that it performs and that its documentation is subject to the requirements related to subsequent modification. Lastly, in some audits, Auditors other than the lead auditor perform audit procedures on the financial statements of a company's investees, for example, for certain investments accounted for by the company under the equity method. In distinguishing the requirements for these types of situations where the investees' financial statements are audited by another accounting firm, from the requirements for audits involving other auditors or referred to auditors, we are recommending to amend the board's audit evidence standard, Appendix B of AS 1105. Amendments in this standard include providing a more descriptive term, investee auditor, and certain other clarifying edits. I will now turn the floor back over to Stephanie for the staff's recommendation. Chair Williams and board members, the staff recommends that the board adopt the amendments on planning and supervision of audits involving other auditors, and adopt the new standard on dividing responsibility for the audit with another accounting firm. We'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Barb, Stephanie, and Andrew. At this time, my fellow board members and I will have an opportunity to make a statement or ask questions to the staff. We will proceed in the order of seniority, and I will begin. As we approach the 20th anniversary of the enactment of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, we have an exciting task ahead of us to modernize and streamline our standards and rules to meet the modern day challenges and complexities and to do so in a manner that continues to put investor our investor protection mission front and center. This is the first standard this newly constituted board has had the opportunity to consider. The amendments before us today are intended to improve the lead auditor's supervision of other auditors' work and help ensure that sufficient appropriate evidence is obtained to support the lead auditor's opinion in the audit report. Enhancing the lead auditor's supervision of other auditors, including through better coordination and communication, should result in increased investor protection by improving the lead auditor's ability to prevent or detect deficiencies in the work of other auditors before the audit report is issued. I support the recommendation before us to adopt amendments to modernize these PCAOB standards, including adopting a new auditing standard that strengthen the requirements applicable to audits involving accounting firms and individual accountants outside the accounting firm that is issuing the audit report on a company's consolidated financial statement. Companies continue to increase their global presence. As a result, the use of other auditors has become more prevalent in the conduct of an audit, which can create additional challenges for the lead auditor. 
Adding other auditors into the process requires careful consideration and clear communications between all auditors involved in the audit. And when miscommunication occurs, or when there are misunderstandings about the nature, timing, and extent of the other auditor's procedures, audit quality will likely suffer. As, a re as we have observed, some audit firms in recent years have improved their approach to supervising the work of other auditors. We also, however, continue to see enforcement cases and inspection deficiencies that point to failures by certain lead auditors overseeing the work of other auditors. These observations indicate that there is room for improvement and that investor, investor protection could benefit from the lead auditor's increased involvement in and evaluation of the work of other auditors. These amendments provide sufficient flexibility to address advances in technology, such as advances facilitating the communication between the lead auditor and other auditors. This should empower audit firms to develop and use technology that improves the overall interaction between the lead auditor and other auditors to the extent that these advancements in technology lead to improved audit quality. In addition to our research and oversight activities, the amendments we are considering today have been informed by responses we received to three comment requests that were issued over the course of the other auditors project. I'm pleased that we are moving forward. Thank you to all that have provided us with comments along our journey. As noted earlier, this is the first rulemaking before this board, the first of what I expect to be many more to come as we work together to advance our standard setting agenda I would like to take a moment to thank my fellow board members and their staff for their collaboration on this project. I'd also like to thank and recognize the incredible staff of the PCAOB, without whom we would not be here today. I would especially like to recognize the individuals currently working on the project team from the Office of Chief Auditor, Barb Vantage, Dima Adrianenko, Stephanie Hunter, Andrew Cleave, and Hunter Jones, from the Office of Economic and Risk Analysis, Michael Gerbert, Tian Liang, and John Powers, and from the Office of General Counsel, Drew Dropkin and Vince Meehan. Lastly, I would like to thank the Securities and Exchange Commission staff for their support and assistance. I will now turn to my fellow board members for any statements they may wish to make. Board Member Desparti, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair Williams. Um, I, too, fully support the recommendation before us today to strengthen and clarify our standards for audits involving multiple audit firms. Similar to the improvements that we made to our standards for auditing estimates and for using the work of specialists that were implemented for 2020 audits, today's action strengthens requirements in a complex audit area in which we have seen recurring deficiencies. As companies continue to expand their operations across the globe, the extent and complexity of audits involving multiple audit firms has only increased. In 2021, multiple auditors were used in 26% of all issuer audit engagements, and nearly 30% of these audits involve five or more other audit firms. As has been mentioned, working across multiple audit firms can raise challenges in coordination and communication which can result in misunderstandings about the nature, timing, and extent of the work performed by other auditors, and therefore may result in reduced audit quality. It is thus important that the lead auditor adequately plan and supervise the work of other auditors. Today's amendments increase and improve the lead auditor's involvement in and evaluation of the work of other auditors to help ensure that audit scopes are sufficient and that the work is performed appropriately. The amendments, as Stephanie mentioned, also provide for the lead auditor to perform specific procedures regarding the other auditor's understanding of and compliance with independence and ethics requirements, and regarding the knowledge, skill, and ability of the other auditors participating in planning and supervision activities. Overall, I believe today's amendments clarify and strengthen the roles and accountabilities of the lead auditor and the other auditors, thereby improving audit quality. Thank you to everyone that has provided us comments as we have worked to finalize this important project. 
stakeholder improvement will continue to be invaluable. A stakeholder, in, a stakeholder input rather will continue to be invaluable as we pursue other projects to strengthen our standards as set forth in our recently released standard setting and research agendas, including the important project addressing firms quality control systems. I look forward to continued engagement with my fellow board members, PCAOB staff, the SEC, and all of our external stakeholders as we work to further strengthen our standards to drive improved audit quality and investor protection. Regarding today's effort, I would like to recognize and thank all those at the PCAOB who have contributed, including my board colleagues, the staff in our offices of the Chief Auditor, Economic and Risk Analysis, General Counsel, and in our divisions of registration and inspections and enforcement and investigations. I would like to especially recognize those individuals from the offices of the Chief Auditor and Economic and Risk Analysis currently on the project team. Barb Vanage, Stephanie Hunter, Dima Andrienko, Hunter Jones, Andrew Cleave, Nayantara Hensel, Michael Gerbit, Dan Liang, and John Powers. I would also like to thank the SEC staff for their support and assistance. And with that, I'll turn it back to you, Chair Williams. Thank you. Board Member Ho, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair Williams. I'm delighted to be a part of this important moment to vote on the adopting release of the Lee Auditor's use of other auditors. As the global reach of public companies continue to expand, the role of other auditors in practice has concurrently enlarged, creating challenges for Lee Auditors in planning and coordinating with other auditors outside of their firms. As a regulator, we have the obligation to protect investors by setting principles-based standards that ultimately improve the quality of audits. It is imperative for Lee auditors to sufficiently plan and supervise the work of other auditors in accordance with PCAOB standards and obtain sufficient audit evidence to support the Lee auditors' audit opinion. This adopting release strengthens our trust in the performance of audits involving multiple audit firms, which it includes Lee auditors working with other auditors or referred to auditors. In my opinion, trust is vital to maintaining highly efficient and effective capital markets. As noted earlier by Stephanie and Andrew, the revisions enhance planning and supervision do professional care, independence, and engagement quality review, among others. After three rounds of public comment and countless staff hours, it is clear that a considerable amount of effort was invested in preparing this adopting release since the first proposing release in 2016. I'd like to take this occasion to thank the staff again, in particular, Barbara Vanich, Dima Andrienko, Stephanie Hunter, Andrew Cleave, Hunter Jones, Nayan Tara Hensel, Michael Gerbert, Tian Lian, John Powers, Drew Dropkins, and Vince Mian, who contributed to this release, and all the stakeholders that provided invaluable comments. In conclusion, I'm pleased to support the adoption of the new requirements for the Lee auditor's use of other auditors, which increases my trust in the quality of audits and by extension, boosting my confidence of the capital markets ecosystem. Thank you, and I look forward to the continued teamwork. Back to you, Chair Williams. Thank you. Board Member Stein, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair Williams. Good morning, everyone. I want to join my colleagues in thanking the staff for this recommendation, which is the first standard setting recommendation for this newly constituted board. Multinational companies can be complex, particularly when significant operations or sales occur around the globe. And it is not uncommon uh, for operations to be conducted in countries with different cultures, languages, business practices, and legal architecture. 
Correspondingly, uh, the assurance teams responsible for auditing multinational companies can be complex. The size and complexity of an audit may require a wide variety of firms and individuals to be involved, including foreign audit firms and auditors. And that is our focus today on the firms and individuals involved in multi-location audits. Advances in technology, automation, algorithms, even artificial intelligence cannot replace the skepticism and professional judgment of individual auditors. In fact, professional judgment will always be an essential element because it can be augmented but never replaced with technology. The journey required to update this standard appears to have been long and laborious. Updates to the standard were initially proposed in April 2016 with a supplemental release in September 2017 and another supplemental release in September of last year. However, the standard is a necessary complement to the board's oversight to address adverse audit outcomes, which can be driven by poor coordination and communication amongst auditors. The staff have cleverly developed a mix of both principles and rules to address audit deficiencies and weaknesses that have been observed. The amended standard amplifies the lead auditor's requirement for planning and supervising the work of audits involving accounting firms and individual accountants or other auditors by requiring a risk-based supervisory approach. It also dictates certain procedures that lead auditors must perform in order to rely on the work that the other auditors perform, such as determining whether the work was performed as instructed and assessing whether additional audit evidence needs to be obtained. I believe that the most significant improvement, however, is the requirement for the lead auditor to understand, assess, and respond to the other auditor's knowledge, skill, and ability. This includes the other auditor's knowledge and experience with independence and ethics requirements. In addition, investors are well served by new and enhanced requirements for the lead auditor to determine the sufficiency of its own participation. That means the firm signing the report has performed a meaningful portion of the audit in addition to closely supervising the work of the other auditors. Again, I want to thank the PCOB staff who've been involved with this release. All of my fellow board members have listed uh, many of their names out, and um, we're very grateful for all the hard work on the rule. I also want to acknowledge the important contributions of Lillian Senawa, who is no longer a member of the staff, but was intricately involved in this project for several years. With that, I turn it back to Chair Williams. Thank you. Board Member Thompson, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Chair Williams, and good morning to everyone. I am pleased to support the adoption today of AS-1206, dividing responsibility for the audit with another accounting firm and the related revisions to our standards. The continued globalization of public companies has resulted in increasingly complex audits, which frequently involve multiple audit firms across international markets, resulting in increased risk to audit quality. Through our inspections and enforcement activities, the PCOB continues to see deficiencies and areas for improvement in the coordination and communication between lead audit firms and other auditors. Such deficiencies frequently arise due to insufficient coordination and miscommunication between the lead auditor and other auditors, which results in misunderstandings about the nature, timing, and extent of other auditors' work. AS-1206 strengthens the required involvement of lead auditors in planning and supervising the work of other auditors, and in so doing should improve audit quality and, therefore, investor protection. The changes to our existing standards will better ensure that the lead auditor is sufficiently involved in and evaluates the procedures performed by other audit firms. Such involvement should improve audit quality through better communication among auditors and increase the ability of the lead auditor to prevent or detect deficiencies 
in those procedures before the lead auditor issues its audit report and before harm to investors can occur. The standard and related revisions adopted today incorporate our consideration of comments we received in prior proposals released in 2016, 2017, and 2021, along with stakeholder input and results of our oversight activity since then. In closing, I would like to recognize and thank all those at the PCOB who have contributed to this effort, including the staff in our offices of Chief Auditor, Economic and Resource Risk Analysis, and general counsel. I would like to especially recognize those individuals from the Office of Chief Auditor currently on the project team, Barb Banich, Stephanie Herner, Demma Andrienko, Hunter Jones, Andrew Cleave, and I would also like to thank the SEC staff for their support and assistance. And the list goes on, on many, many of our staff uh, not named contributed and thanks to all. Thank you, Chair Williams. Thank you. Unless there are any further discussions from the board, I would now call for a vote on the staff recommendation. Board member Desparti. Thank you, I fully support the recommendation. Thank you, board member Ho. Thank you, I support the recommendation. Thank you, board member Stein. I also support the recommendation. Thank you, board member Thompson support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. I also support the recommendation. All votes are unanimous and the recommendation is approved. That concludes the PCAOB's open meeting for today. As there is no further business, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for your participation. You may now disconnect from the webcast and teleconference.